I'll spend hours sometimes of, you know, agonizing if I have to leave a name off a map or a sentence out of something. And, and you know, I said, I really don't want to do this, especially in a map, because I said, if I don't put this name on this map, it's going to be lost forever. You know, nobody's going to know that this ford across the Rappahannock River was once called Stepping Stones Ford. And that name is just too good to lose. From an early age, of course, I grew up in World War II. And during this time, maps were on the front pages of all the newspapers showing the progress of the war. And I began to doodle maps, not wartime maps, but maps of imaginary islands and imaginary towns and imaginary lands, just as someone else would doodle something else. Uh, and so I became sort of interested in maps, hand-drawn maps. And uh, I once told somebody I'm doing the same thing now that I did when I was seven years old, except now I get paid for it and they're not imaginary, but they're the same style. Then I drew with a pencil and now I draw with a pen. I decided that I would write uh, Dr. Grosvenor again at the National Geographic magazine and said, well, now I've had you know, a couple small jobs. I've done my military service and I would like to uh, join the editorial staff of the National Geographic magazine. And he wrote me back a letter and he said, well, please come down from an interview. I think we'd like to have you. I began spending more and more time away from the National Geographic, but I was writing a lot of memorandums. And the last, my last year at the National Geographic, which was 1969, I got the biggest raise ever, and I had spent the least amount of time there. So I said to Annette, you know, I said, maybe I should just leave and show up every once in a while. I noticed a little squib in the Loudon Times mirror. And it said, uh, wanted, uh, uh, we need someone to make a map of Loudoun County. And while I was working on this map, I began to realize that, that people wanted to talk about these sites. When you're making a historical map, you're really interested in two things. You're interested in where it is or where it was and what it was called, because you want to label it, you know, that whatever. But people were saying, now, now let me tell you about this. You know, they were, and I began taking down notes of old timers then. I began to realize that people would talk to me and tell me things that they wouldn't tell other people because I would come back to them. In time, I'd have spoken to a grandfather and a father and now a son in the same family. You know, talking to older people is, is just very, very important to me. I would, I would rather travel 50 miles uh, and, and talk to somebody about something and, uh, you know, that if they called me up and said, gee, I want to tell you something, than spend hours on the internet. There are two things in Loudoun County that I, if somebody, somebody asked me, you know, what, what are you most proud of and of what you've done in Loudoun County? And I would say first, it's talking to people and taking down their stories, their lives that would have been lost or they'd never been able to take down. And this has given me sort of a sense of being able to close my eye and say, what did this area look like? 
a hundred years ago or 50 years ago or what is this fellow talking about? You know, what is, um, it, it's, it's given me a great appreciation of what life was once like, a, a life that I missed and a life that I, I came in at the tail, the very tail end of it. Uh, I'm the type of person who, uh, when driving someplace, uh, always wants to take a back road and are always sort of looking for something that's un unusual.